All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and man, we are in big trouble going against these Bengals. Have y'all seen the injury report, man? We're about to dive into this real quick. Let's get it. Man, no, oh man, it's looking dark for us. I mean, we can start with the Bengals, and really their list isn't extensive. I mean, the only person that's guaranteed to be out is Joe Mixon, the running back, but Giovanni Bernard is able to step up right in his place and make plays, and he's been a good fantasy option whenever Joe Mixon hasn't been able to play this season. And then their only questionables are Marcus Hunt, the defensive lineman, Fred Johnson, the guard, Alex Redmond, the guard, Mike Thomas, the wide receiver, and Xavier Williams, the other defensive lineman. Everybody else is a full go. So they're not as banged up as we are, because when you get to us, this is where it gets dark. You have Ryan Anderson, which is not big news for us, but he will be out. DeShazer Everett at safety, we're going to dive into that. Cornelius at tackle, we're going to dive into that. And Jared Norris at linebacker. And then those are just the outs. Then you have the questionables. You have Dustin Hopkins, the kicker, who's already been struggling. So if he plays, he's going to play hurt. You have Dontrell M in the wide receiver. Nick Sunberg, the long snapper. He's questionable because of illness, but he was a full participant in practice today, as in Friday. So he should be straight to go. Because you just, I mean, finding a backup long snapper is like impossible to just do at the last second. So he has to be healthy. And then wide receiver Isaiah Wright, undrafted free agent that's been, you know, starting to grow and making some plays, but he's also questionable. And then, of course, Jerron Christian was moved to IR, which brings me to, we're going to start with the offensive line. That's why we're in big trouble right now. Offensive line, shambles. We saw last week when Cornelius Lucas was hurt, David Sharp had to step in, and David Sharp is just so bad. They put him at right tackle, and they were forced to move Morgan Moses to left tackle. Morgan Moses held his own, but he's definitely more of a right tackle. He's not a left tackle, and the fact that David Sharp is just so bad that we can't even put him in at left tackle just shows how bad he is. And, I mean, Pro Football Focus even gave him a 34.9 grade, a 34.9%. You know how mad my parents would have been if I came back home with a 34.9 on my report card anywhere? It could have been gym. It could have been cafeteria. It could have been lunch. If I come back from a paper ball throwing competition with a 34.9% grade, my mom gonna be mad at me for that. So, I mean, that should just tell you everything you need to know about David Sharp. And to make it even worse, Morgan Moses doesn't like playing at left tackle. He said when addressing the media that he had a couple of come to Jesus talks before switching from right to left. And he just took it one snap at a time. So he doesn't even wanna play left tackle. So if he comes out the gate starting at left tackle, we're just in trouble. He's been good for us, actually really good for us at right tackle. I don't know how he's going to hold up at left tackle. And just David Sharp being in the game at all is tragic. I don't see Alex Smith getting much time to throw the ball. You can see a difference between when Cornelius Lucas was out there and then when he got hurt, how much time Alex Smith had to throw the ball against the Lions. So I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't, I don't know how we're going to be able to protect Alex Smith. Brandon Sheriff is going to have to have one of his best games of all time for us to even keep Alex Smith relatively safe this game. And then the safety position, man. Troy Apke is now starting again. You saw how they started throwing deep bombs, speaking about the Lions, started throwing deep balls against us after DeShazer Everett got hurt and Troy Apke came into the game. Now, granted, that one, that last drive where they ended up getting the field goal anyway and Chase Young had that stupid penalty, that deep ball that was thrown deep down the field was also kind of Kendall Fuller's fault because we were in quarters defense so that was also his responsibility some but we've already seen this Troy Apke situation we've seen this show over and over again he gets beat deep constantly and if he's not getting beat deep he can't tackle anybody in the run game or a receiver that's already caught the ball he just can't tackle so it's either a big play through the air or on legs right past him no matter what so that's really troublesome because Joe Burrow's gonna be one of the most talented quarterbacks we've gone against this season season especially just arm talent wise and he loves to throw the deep ball I mean look at his week seven stats I mean he throws the ball everywhere he throws it 30 yards or further multiple times a game and you can see this chart from his week seven performance I'm expecting more dots deep down the field against us simply because Trey Apke starting this may be his most risk-taking game yet I think he's just gonna spam deep balls against us and it's gonna be up to us to stop him man and in comparison you have Alex Smith who last week against the Lions had his most productive game he's ever had for us in the burgundy and gold for the years that he's been here and he still never even threw 
one pass 30 yards down the field or more. He had one 26 yarder, two 24s, two 20s, and everything else is 19 or closer, which is going to suck because we're going to have to ask Alex Smith to probably win us this game with his arm, which is not something you ask Alex Smith to do. He's more of a game manager, but he's going to have to play keep up with how Joe Burrow is probably going to be able to abuse our secondary. And now the teams are learning how to beat Kendall Fuller. Kendall Fuller has put back to back relatively bad games and the Lions being the worst. It seems like teams have figured them out. They know that they can beat him deep also and they're starting to attack that so i'm very worried for this team because of our defensive line can't get more pressure like they were the first few games way better than they've been doing these past few games especially since man united has been gone then they're just gonna throw a whole bunch of deep bombs on us and i don't think we have the offense or even the quarterback specifically to play catch up because i think a lot of alex smith's yardage and great plays against the Lions were just the Lions playing prevent defense once they had a certain type of lead. And then once we started gaining on them and they started putting the clamps back on defense, you saw our offense start to struggle again. But we'll see, man. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Joe Burrow has a bad game. Maybe our defensive line gets home more often than they've been able to do the past few games. Maybe Alex Smith does even better than his best game so far in Burgundy and Gold against the Lions. Maybe he tops that against the Bengals. Who knows? We'll see. I'm expecting Terry McLaurin to have a great game, of course. I'm expecting Antonio Gibson to bounce back a little. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video, man. Please like this video if you liked it. If you learned anything, please comment on anything that you want to comment about. I'm about to get in the comment sections. I know I'm behind like three or four videos. I'm about to start replying to everybody slowly but surely. Got a lot of catching up to do. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you get more videos like this. And hit that bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification every time I release a video like this one. Every time I schedule a live stream. Every time I start up a live stream. Y'all already know I'm live streaming during the game. We'll take an hour break and we come back for the post game live stream where y'all can call in and voice y'all opinions. Y'all already know, man. Every week. Won't be doing that Thanksgiving though, just to let y'all know. But I will be doing it every week that we play on Sunday. And as always, man, I really appreciate everybody that gives to the channel, everybody that supports the channel. Thank you for everybody that donates to the channel. And big shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors, whose names you see scrolling on the screen right now. And a big shout out to my all-pro sponsor, Troy Cabrera. And I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.